Here is a section through some tissue in which you could see once again squamous mucosa. You could see underlying it in the subepithelial connective tissue, there is fairly heavy infiltrates of chronic inflammatory cells. Although, beca although because you see a lot of blood vessels too, if you said organizing and chronic, that would be fine. And if you saw that there were a lot of neutrophils in this little vessel here, for example, if you wanted to throw in acute as well, you would be absolutely politically correct. Let's see if there were some neutrophils inside of that blood vessel. Yes, there are. There are predominantly neutrophils here and here. There are predominantly lymphocytes and maybe some plasma cells in the surrounding stroma. And because there are so many of these little budding blood vessels like here and here. So here we have like in one view, uh, a really good example of acute organizing and chronic inflammation, don't we? Uh, the lymphocytes are chronic inflammatory cells. These budding blood vessels here, 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 and here, and here, and here is organizing inflammation. And there's still some remnant of a lot of neutrophils. Every single cell inside this blood vessel is a neutrophil. So here's your acute. The blood vessels are your organizing and the lymphocytes are your chronic uh, inflammation. Well, this is all really nice, but is that really what the slide is all about? Look at the maturation of the squamous mucosa. You would have to say it is kind of normal because it uh, has a nice linear arrangement of columnar type cells at the base. And then it flattens out nicely at the surface, surface of the cervix. How do you like that? And in addition, uh, you have that nice transition from a basal layer to superficial layer. There's no keratinization. Notice that a lot of these uh, squamous cells have a little halo around them, like you see in cytology, the so-called so -called coilocytosis. So if you wanted to suspect that perhaps there was a strong HPV effect here, you'd probably be correct. Another thing that HPV does, besides causing inflammation and causing coilocytosis, it also causes cancer. So if you follow this relatively normal, but inflamed, and maybe HPV infected squamous epithelium out. Uh, there's more inflammation underneath it. And eventually you'll be running into stuff which doesn't look like pure old uh, inflammation anymore, does it? It looks like when you look underneath this inflamed squamous mucosa, you see some more squamous nests but uh, they don't at all look uh, normal and orderly like we saw before. This is infiltrating squamous cell cancer again. And in the middle of it, you have necrotic, perhaps keratinized or inflammatory debris and fibrin. But uh, take a look at the uh, squamous cells in this region. They are not only look like uh, coilocytosis, but they are obviously malignant. They're disorganized, there's no maturation. There's mitoses all over the place. You know, perhaps some squamous cell carcinomas are not caused by HPV. Uh, perhaps many or most or all of them are. But in this case, uh, not only do we see an obvious cancer, but we see all these uh, coilocytotic uh, figures with the clear zone around the nucleus. So to make a long story short, this is a pretty extensive now squamous cell carcinoma underlying the squamous epithelium part of the cervix in which there are a lot of uh, HPV changes as well. There's no doubt as to what caused this cancer, and I thank you very much.